welcome. This is Dave Eshelman. Thanks to Mary Smith for, and to Doug Garrett for the music and the audio. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the joy of Easter and the hope of eternal heaven. This is encouraging to us. We need continual encouragement. And may the scripture today help us to both receive and give encouragement. In Jesus' name, amen. If you follow sports, you know the home team has an advantage. This is because the hometown fans are cheering their team, encouraging them to win. Paul in Ephesians 6 writes, Tachius, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything so that you may know how I am and what I'm doing. I am sending him to you that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. Paul knew the Christians in Ephesus needed encouragement. We may be tempted to think that a person of Paul's stature does not need encouragement. We all need encouragement. Paul's final words to the Corinthians are, encourage each other, live in harmony and peace. And then the God of love and peace will be with you, 2 Corinthians 13. Encourage each other. Hebrews 10, consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. In Hebrews 3, we read, encourage one another daily. Encourage one another daily. Why? So that none of you may be hardened by sin. The Thessalonians were experiencing persecution. In chapter 5, Paul says, build each other up, live in peace, help the weak, be patient, resist revenge, be joyful, pray continually, give thanks, and encourage the disheartened. He assumed there would be those who in the, are in the Thessalonian church who are discouraged or disheartened. So we are to encourage them. They're in every church. The encourager speaks words of comfort and admonition to others, motivating them toward maturity in Christ. Paul writes to the Colossians, Christ is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present them fully mature in Christ. Paul strenuously encouraged the Colossians to mature in Christ. Throughout Paul's life, he is set on helping people mature in Christ's likeness. So intense is he that he uses the phrase, I strenuously contend or struggle with all the energy Christ so powerfully gives me. The word for strenuously contends is the same word that describes Jesus in praying in the Garden of Gethsemane when being in anguish or struggling, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like great clouds of blood dropping down upon the ground, Luke 22. As we grow in Christ, we learn to be encouraged as we recall God's faithfulness and control over everything that touches us, giving us strength to walk with God even when we feel like giving up in despair. After all, God has not changed. He is perfectly capable of sustaining or helping us if we will only let him. We simply need to choose to delight in and uh, diligently consider his precepts despite how we feel. 
Choosing to delight in God might not be easy. It might even involve hard work. But only God can revive, encourage, and save our souls from spiritual lethargy. Next time you feel spiritually drained or inadequate, remember you have a choice. You can wrap yourself up in excuses and self-pity, or you can choose to draw your strength from an unchanging God. The Holy Spirit is our encourager. Jesus said, I'll ask the Father, and he will give you an advocate, a helper, a counselor, an intercessor, a strengthener, and we could say an encourager, that he may remain with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. The world doesn't have the Holy Spirit, but you do, so we need to let the Spirit be our encourager. Thank the Holy Spirit for his encouragement. Multitudes live continually discouraged. The news is negative. The media nearly is always negative. We need encouragement. So let's build each other up. Let's encourage one another. Paul encourages the Ephesians. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is encouraging or helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may truly benefit those who listen. First, build yourself up so you can encourage others. Jude says, behold, or beloved, build yourselves up in the most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. So we build ourselves up by getting into God's word and praying in the Holy Spirit. Paul writes in Romans 14, 19, let us aim for harmony and try to build each other up. E even starting with a broad smile is a good way to begin. As you uh, talk with people, be conscious of signs of discouragement. Pray silently on the spot. Lord, how can I encourage this person? You'll be surprised as God uses you to encourage them. The Holy Spirit lives in you, and he will give you words to say and strength to help. Trust him. Move out of your comfort zone, and he will use you, surprise you, and encourage you. Jesus gives us inner resources so we can build ourselves and others up. On the greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever, that includes you, believes in me, rivers of living water will flow from within them. John 7. We build ourselves up by coming to Jesus for the rivers of living water. The apostles nicknamed Joseph with the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Barnabas, the son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles for those in need, Acts 7, Acts 4, 37. He was generous. And when Barnabas sold his land, uh, he didn't need to keep the money for himself to buy what he wanted. He gave it to the apostles to share with other believers. He was truly an encourager. Paul also describes a person with the gift of prophecy as one who encourages or strengthens and comforts the church. In 1 Corinthians 14, Isaiah 54 paraphrase reads, though the mountains be shaken, Though I am in the midst of trouble, yet God's unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace and encouragement. My covenant of peace and encouragement be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. We have a God who covenants encouragement 
to us. We all have times of discouragement. John the Baptist was discouraged in prison. The Lord uh, said of John the Baptist, there is none greater born among women. Now if John, who is one of the greatest men who ever lived, got discouraged, then you and I must realize that normal people do get discouraged from time to time. Elijah got discouraged. When Jezebel was determined to kill him, he ran for his life and wished to die. David had times of discouragement. When he returned from the battle, he found the whole city had been burned. All their wives and children had been captured by the Amalekites. Notice the devil makes his most vicious attacks on us when we are at our weakest. For Samuel 30, verse 6, David was greatly distressed for the people wanted to stone him. What did David do? David encouraged himself in the Lord. There may be times when we face the storms of life and there is no one to encourage us. And we have to do what David did. He encouraged himself in the Lord. <clears throat> A man stopped by at my book stand at Roots and introduced himself. He identified himself as a neighbor farmer when I was a teenage boy. At that time, he was struggling financially, and my dad gave him a load of hay. <coughs> he remembered that act of encouragement for 40 some years ago and felt compared to share that word of encouragement with me. When I was a student at uh, college 60 years ago, I received an anonymous check toward my tuition. What an encouragement that was. When selling my books, occasionally someone gives me a nice tip or thanks me for writing my books, which also encourages me. In speaking with another pastor, he told me with tears, how when he was in the hospital for an extended time, no one from his church came to see him. This is a clear testimony of the carnality of his church. As Christians were to build each other up, pray for one another, encourage one another. My wife has the gift of encouragement. Daily she meets people and shares God's goodness in the midst of her continual physical pain. She is then blessed and encouraged as she sees them encouraged. Who does the Lord want you to encourage today? A member of your family? A friend going through a difficult time? A grandchild? Or may the Holy Spirit lead you to that person that God has for you to encourage today? Let's pray. Father, like King David or John the Baptist or Elijah, we may have times of discouragement. Like David, help us to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Thank you that you are the God of eternal encouragement. You never forsake us or leave us alone. Enable us to be an encourager for someone today. Amen. Mary will play follow on. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go where the flowers are blooming and the sweet waters flow, walking in his footsteps till the crown be won. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go where the storms are sweeping and the dark waters flow. With his hand to lead me I will never, never fear. Danger cannot frighten me if the Lord, my Lord is near. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I would follow on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Everywhere he leads me, I would follow on. Mary? <laughs>